In the previous video, I discussed how to draw a decision tree for one decision. Now I will discuss how to draw a decision tree for two or more decisions, also known as sequential decisions. The example I will use is about the Thomson Lumber Company. The probability of favorable market is 0.5. The owner of Thomson Lumber Company obtained this probability from his own experience and by following the business news. However, this probability is not accurate. To get a more accurate probability, the owner can hire a marketing consultant to conduct a survey. However, the service is not free. Suppose the consultant charge $10,000 for the survey. The owner now has two decisions to make. The first decision is whether or not to hire the marketing consultant to conduct the survey. The second decision is whether to build a large plant, small plant or do nothing. This is an example of sequential decisions. Sequential decisions are when there are two or more decisions to be made. First, draw the decision whether to conduct survey or no survey. If conduct survey, there must be the results of the survey. The results are either favorable or unfavorable. But if don't conduct survey, then there are no results. Next, draw the decision whether to build large plant, small plant or do nothing. The market can either be favorable or unfavorable. If the decision is do nothing, we don't draw any branches because the payoff will be the same whether for favorable or unfavorable market. We enter the payoffs. Suppose the payoffs are in thousands of dollars. The payoffs obtained when following the branch no survey are the same payoffs in the previous video. This is because in the previous video, no mention was made about conducting a survey. We fill in the payoffs obtained after conducting the survey. Since the cost of the survey is $10,000, we have to deduct $10,000 from each payoff. For example, for no survey, the payoff for large fable is $200. But if conduct survey, the payoff is $200 minus 10, which is $190. For the branch no survey, the probabilities are the same as in the previous video. That is, Probability of favorable market is 0 
and probability of unfavorable market is 0 0.5 suppose probability of favorable market given favorable result of survey is 0 0.78 we follow the branch conduct survey and choose favorable result then continue along the branch until we get favorable market write down the probability of favorable market is 0 0.78 Note that probability of unfavorable market is 1 minus 0 0.78 or 0 0.22. Suppose probability of favorable market given unfavorable result of survey is 0 0.27. We follow the branch conduct survey and choose unfavorable result. Then continue along the branch until we get favorable market. Write down the probability of favorable market is 0 0.27. Note that probability of unfavorable market is 1 minus 0 0.27 or 0 0.73. Suppose probability of favorable result of survey is 0 0.45. Therefore, probability of unfavorable result is 0 0.55. Calculate the EMVs at each state of nature node. Start from the right side of the decision tree. Select the branch with the highest payoff. For example, between payoffs 106.4, 63.6 and negative 10, choose 106.4. Write this value on top of the decision node. For the branches we don't choose, cut the branch. Between 49.2 and 40, 49.2 is bigger. Choose the branch, conduct, survey. How to write the decision? We follow the branches we don't cut. The decision is to conduct the survey. If results are favorable, build large plan. If results are unfavorable, build small plan. We can also calculate the expected value of sample information or EVSI. EVSI represents the most one would pay for perfect information. One example of perfect information is information obtained from a market survey. EBSI can be calculated from the formula expected value with sample information plus cost minus expected value without sample information. EBSI equals to expected value if do survey 49.2 plus cost of survey 10 minus expected value if don't do survey 40 which equals to 19.2 or 19,200